Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first in a two part video series talking about how to set up the S6R. This also works for the S8R and these are the receivers from FreeSky or FRSky that actually do stabilization as well. Now you can turn all those features off and just use them as a standard X6R or X8R but kind of the whole point of these things is that you can put them in a plane and they will do things like auto level, they'll just stabilization, they'll also allow you to do hovering, knife edges and tips and tricks as well. Now this is a video that's been a very long time in the making. I first looked at this over a year ago and the software and firmware has been gently updating. Things have been getting fixed and improving over time and every time it felt like I was getting close to make a video they'd bring out a new version of the beta software, change some of the names, change some of the features and add things to it as well. So I'm kind of drawing a line in the sand and I'm going to make a video now for all of those people who have been in touch particularly on that original S6R video that I did well over a year ago just asking me to help them figure this out because I think lots of people just like me bought these things, were really excited about trying them out and then just kind of gave up because it just got too blooming hard. So in this video, the first one of the two, we're going to talk about the basics to get it set up, ready to pop it into the plane and get out there and try and fly. So before we start this, let me just go through a couple of things of note. First of all, I'm going to try and use the latest names for everything because not only have they changed everything in the firmware, they've also changed the names for stuff too. So that's part of the challenge. Sometimes you're looking at how to set this up, you'll look in the forums, you'll look online on YouTube, and you'll find lots of different names that are basically talking about the same thing. And that is adding to the confusion. Now, I've got some really great help from people like RCDIY, from the flight test forums in particular. There's a couple of people on there who've been fantastic and also reading through the RC Group's sites. But what it's taken is me pooling all of that information and actually just doing it myself because a lot of those posts are not talking about how you incorporate the S6R or the S8R's stabilization functionality with the standard setup of a plane. Now I've already done a plane setup video with OpenTX and we talk about how you center the servos and how it's trimmed and all that kind of goodness but that isn't part of the instructions that are around at the moment. The manual for the SXR is not very good at all. I believe it's about to be updated, but it's based on a very old version of the firmware. So some of the stuff that we're going to talk about in here isn't in the FR Sky manual at all. But hopefully if you follow along with these steps, you'll get yours working as I have got mine here too. Now in these videos, I'm only going to be covering simple mode. Now simple mode used to be called convenient mode. See where some of the confusion is coming from? And simple mode only gives you three flight modes on the, on the S6R. The first one is kind of an auto level mode, a beginner mode. The second one is to stabilize. And the third one is to turn the functionality off. Now you can turn off simple mode and have the more advanced mode. And in advanced mode, it will also support things like knife edge, uh, 3D hovering and all kinds of stuff as well. But if you can get it working in simple mode, then you can add the extra pieces in relatively easily to set up the rest as well. And the part of the reason that simple mode or convenient mode as it used to be called was introduced was that the initial settings for this thing was overly blooming complicated. So with all of that said, let's actually start to set this thing up. Now the very first part of the setup I'd recommend is flash the latest and greatest firmware onto the receiver. Now if you don't know how to do that, I have a video showing how to do that using your radio. You download the firmware onto the SD card and then using a servo cable, you can kind of connect it into the back of the radio or the pins at the bottom and you can flash the latest and greatest firmware. I'm not going to go through that here, but I'll link to it in the description and I've put a link here in the top right hand corner. Go and have a look at that. That will talk you through everything. But update to the latest and greatest version. Otherwise, you'll be using an older version that may have slightly different settings and work slightly differently too. The other thing you need to do is copy the latest and greatest Lua scripts onto your SD card. Now to download the Lua scripts, again, I've got a whole video on Lua scripts. I'll link you to that if that's something you're not interested in, but go into companion, select download, select SD card contents. And in there is a directory called SXR. And that's X is there because you can use it with both the S6R and the X8R as well. There's two scripts in there, one that you use to set everything up and the other one is used just once to calibrate everything as well. 
copy that SXR directory onto your SD card and you're going to need a radio that's running OpenTX 2.2 or later so you can run the Lua script to do the configuration. Now you can configure the S6R or the SATR using the STK tool that we looked at in the very original video. That allows you to plug it into a computer and do the configuration. And while that's very handy for initial setup, you can't use the STK tool when you've got servos and other things plugged into the receiver. So I would always recommend personally, if you are going to set this up, I just do it all through the lower script. It's an awful lot safer. And it also means that the steps later on, we have to do the calibration setup, maybe reverse the stabilization movement in the ailerons elevator or whatever it is you have, will all do as well. So now we have the latest firmware on it and we've got the latest Lua script. Bind the S6R like you would an X8R or X6R receiver, standard stuff using the D16 protocol. Once you've got it bound, the first thing you have to do, and you only have to do it once luckily, is run the calibration before installing it into a model. So with nothing else installed, go through the calibration routine. Again, you can do it through the calibration.lua script that's on the radio, or if you have the STK tool, you can download the PC app from the FR Sky website and you can run through it as well. And what it will do is ask you to put the receiver in all of the orientations and that just calibrates all of the accelerometers and gyros and things inside so that it knows exactly which way round it is. Like I said, you only have to do that once. Once you've done it, then you can just forget about that piece. Next thing to do then is do the basic setups on the actual thing itself. So while you're connected to the SXR, run the standard SXR.lua script, and the first page is going to ask you the two very basic things. First of all, is what kind of frame type have you got? And there's a couple to choose from. Uh, on some of the models, it'll actually show you a little image as you're working through. I'm using a QX7 here, and it's rather basic. It's all very text-based. If you're doing this on something like the PC application using the STK tool that you plug into the receiver, then it has some nice pretty graphics as well. But you need to decide what the frame type is that you're actually going to use. Now I'm going to put mine into this plane here. This is the EFX Racer. This is a plane from Hobby King. This is my second one. I destroyed the first one in quite a nasty crash. These are great little agile planes, but because they're agility and speed, having the ability to have an auto level or a stabilized function uh, for other people to have a go at it is gonna be a very handy thing indeed. So I'm going to select a standard airplane layout. The next thing then we need to think about is how it's going to be plugged into the actual model itself. And although you can change this later on, this is probably worthwhile spending a bit of time thinking about. Now you can put it in pretty much any orientation so long as the pins that you plug all the servos and the speed controls and things into are actually pointing towards the tail of the plane. Now this is a real pain in the butt as far as I'm concerned at the moment. I would love to be able to mount this thing the other way around, but you have to orientate it that way. So you might have to figure out which way around it will go. In my plane, I had to take out a little bit of foam so that it would fit horizontally in one orientation. And then I had to tell the S6R which orientation it that was through the Lua script. Once you've got those first two things set, then you can go into the next part of the setup and we can go set things like whether it's got simple mode turned on and all of that goodness. But the big thing that we need to do is actually now set up the radio. So let me go onto the bench and let me talk through the three or four additional controls that you need to add into the mixer on OpenTX that are actually gonna control how the S6R is going to work. So let me just quickly show you what you need to do on the radio to get it all set up, ready for actually starting plugging everything together in the plane and doing the final steps before the first test flight. So let me just turn the radio on. And first of all, let's just press menu and page and go into the inputs. First of all, the inputs for this plane are very standard, straightforward. So throttle aileron elevator rudder. I've got a little bit of expo on uh, aileron elevator and a little bit on rudder. Uh, you need that on this little plane when you're flying normally because it's such a twitchy little bear. Next page then is the one with all the fun stuff. So I've got the outputs set in this particular order and you need to set the outputs in this specific order aileron first 
then elevator, then throttle, then rudder. Because unlike all of the other receivers from FR Sky, it doesn't just output the mixer settings onto the outputs on the actual receiver itself. It's doing some quite clever stuff. And even if you're running a V-tail, even if you're running elevons on a wing or something else, you don't do any mixing at all. You have your four main controls just set out like that. Now, it's probably worth mentioning before we go any further, Auxiliary 1, Auxiliary 2, which is kind of down here, by default on the receiver, they're set up for secondary servos for the elevator or the aileron. Now, in the previous versions of the firmware, that meant that you couldn't control things like lights, servos, drop gear, control flaps, or any of that goodness. In the latest version, the really nice thing is they've sorted that out. So both through the script and through the PC application, if you're using the STK tool, you can set up whether or not you want the outputs on the SXR to be those two auxiliary channels, which you'd set up here on channels five and channel six, or whether you want them to be those secondary servos. Maybe if you've got a plane that has a servo for each aileron and it doesn't have a Y cable. So now that's the standard stuff out the way, let's go down and talk about the individual pieces that you need to set up. Now there's actually four channels in total. The first one, and probably one of the most complicated, is channel 9. Channel 9 is used by the S6R or the S8R to figure out how much gain you want for the stabilization. Too much gain will cause it to flutter and to vibrate and rock. Too little gain, and you won't get the right desired effect. Uh, the way you do it, I would set it up for one of the rotary knobs, switches or sliders that you can change the value to. Once you've got this dialed in and you're happy, you could set this as a discrete number. But for now, we're just going to set it up so that it works this way. And what we've done is we've added a custom curve onto this. And let me just show you what that curve looks like. Curve I've created that's called gain goes from kind of 50% to 100. The way this works is that if the channel position in the middle, that is considered no gain. And if the channel position is at either 100 or minus 100, that's considered full gain. So it works in a slightly different way. If you set it up with a curve like this, so at one side, it goes to the middle of the channel value, and at the far side, it goes to the other. Now, what that means is that the rotary switch, if it's in the middle position, will give you 50% gain and go from 0 to 100%. It's a bit of a quirk about the way it works, but that's what you need to do with that. So if we just go back to the mixer, go back to channel 9. So there's channel 9. We've got it set up for a rotary switch and we're using that weird and wacky curve so that we can set the gain. If you set the rotary control in the middle position, then it's set at 50% gain, and then you can play with it when we come to the test flight. Next two channels we need to think about are going to be channels 10 and 11. Now, channel 10 is used for the simple mode setting. So if you remember, there's three flight modes. I would recommend setting up channel 10 for a three position switch. The way it works is that when the switch is in minus 100 or a low position, that's the self level. When it's at zero or the middle channel value, it's stabilized. And when it's at high position, it is stabilized off. Channel 11 isn't used in this mode. Normally you'd set that up for another three position switch and that would let you set up all those wacky things like you know hover and knife edge and stuff like that that everyone got completely confused about in the early days but we're not having anything set up on there because I'm using good old simple mode because I only want auto level and stabilize. And then finally, we have channel 12. Now channel 12 needs to be set up to do a couple of things. Initially, we're going to set it up on a three position switch because that allows us to run the calibration when we've got the receiver set in the plane and it can be taught the what level feels like in that particular plane model. And we can also do things like set the limits for the servos and also calibrate the middle channel positions as well. So what you need to do, I would recommend set channel 12 up initially for a three position switch. Once you've got everything dialed in, then we're going to reset that. One of the very last things we do in the next video, back to a little two position switch. I'd recommend using the momentary one. And by pulling that momentary switch, that will activate kind of a oh dear emergency recovery mode that will flip the plane level. So if you're doing uh, something and you completely lose orientation and you have a little bit of a brain fart, then you can flick that switch and the plane will snap back to straight and level flight. 
So those are the four additional things we want. We want channel nine set on a rotary switch with that wacky curve to act as our gain control. Channel 10 is going to be set up on a three position switch to select the mode. Channel 11 is not going to do anything in this time because we're using simple mode. And then channel 12 is going to be set on a three position switch initially because we need to be able to quickly go onto and off the middle channel position three times in three seconds. And that's going to start the calibration. Okay, wow, we've covered quite a bit already in the first half of the video, and we haven't even plugged into the plane. So let me very quickly talk about that before we finish this and go on to the next video. Now, plugging everything into the receiver on your vehicle is a little bit different from all of the other receivers that you get from FR Sky. So normally what you do is you would use the list of outputs in your mixer to figure out which you're going to plug in which. So for example, you plug your aileron to channel one, your elevator into channel two, etc., etc. Now with this receiver, we just follow the labels that are actually on the outputs. So you're going to plug the throttle into the throttle channel, the elevator servo into the elevator channel, and do all of the others as well. And that's because, as I said before, this receiver is a bit weird. It doesn't directly connect the outputs from the mixer to the outputs, the PWM outputs actually on the receiver itself because it's doing all the stabilization and mixing whether you've got a standard plane set up a v-tail or a wing it's doing all that mixing for you which is why we don't have to do it on the radio so just plug in each of your servos into the receiver and join me for the next video where we'll continue the setup and get this thing flying if you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.